What's up everyone, welcome back to another What Science video. If you pump iron for a while, you will build muscle mass, right? Or similarly, if you put in the kilometers running or biking, you will boost your endurance, correct? However, you may know some people or have clients or have personal experience situations where fitness improvements, both in strength and endurance, don't seem to occur despite regular visits to the gym. So in today's video, we're diving into an important question. Is it possible that some individuals don't respond to exercises like running or weightlifting? And if so, are there strategies to overcome this lack of response? Let's dive into the science. We'll kick things off with one of the most impressive, comprehensive studies uh, conducted on this uh, topic led by field legend Claude Bouchard. This involved a family response to view to max study. Bouchard did the huge task of testing 481 inactive people from 98 different families. These folks worked out for 20 weeks, three times each week. Everything was supervised, meaning all their biking uh, training sessions took place in the lab. view to max was tested before and after the 20 weeks as a measure of endurance capacity. Usually the idea is the more oxygen the body can use, the fitter it is. The findings were pretty incredible. The white bars on the graph I'm showing here indicate the range within each family. The black dots are the actual individuals. Even though the average increase in VO2 max or peak through the training was 400 milliliter of additional oxygen consumption, there was a huge variation between people. Some individuals made no gains in fitness, even losing fitness, while others gained over one uh, liter of additional oxygen consumption per kilogram body weight, which is really a lot. Remember, all these people were on the exact same training protocol. The researchers concluded that the highest heritability estimate of the view to max response to training adjusted for age and sex was 47% in this study. So in simpler terms, genetics played a huge role in this study. The same study gave us a beautiful bell curve for training response. Most people gained an average, as I said, around 300 to 400 milliliter oxygen, while some even lost fitness. These folks were dubbed non-responders to endurance exercise. So does this mean that true non-responders actually exist? We'll explore that more in the rest of the video. So we've talked about endurance training, right? Most endurance training. But what about strength training? In a similar study led by Monica Hubal from 2005, 585 subjects, none of them related family-wise, performed unilateral bicep curls or strength training for the upper arm progressively for approximately 12 weeks. Once again, there was a substantial variation between the subjects in their training response. On average, both men, um, represented by the black bars, and also the women, gained approximately 20% of muscle mass, measured by MRI, so a good method. Yet, there were non-responders, so people who did not respond at all to that same training stimulus. You might be thinking, so wait, I can train for 12 weeks and not gain any muscle or even endurance? Well, not so fast. Another robust study by Finnish researchers from 2011 had 89 men and 86 women aged between 40 and 67 um, undergo a 21 week period of either strength training, endurance training, or a combined form of training. Interestingly, the results showed that while there were non-responders to either strength training or endurance training alone, there were no non-responders when the subjects trained in both strength and endurance simultaneously. It's actually pretty fascinating to see that some people mainly gained strength, while others mainly gained endurance when they were com combining their strength and endurance program. MVC on this graph represents maximal voluntary contractions, uh, a measure of strength, obviously, and the y-axis shows increases in VO2 peak. Finally, let's, let's put this matter to the rest. Karsten Lundby and David Montero designed a beautiful study to debunk the myth of non-responders, once and for all. In the initial six weeks of training, five groups of healthy, young subjects 
completed one to five sub-maximal biking sessions in the lab. This added up to 60, 120, 180, 240 and 300 mi minutes of weekly exercise respectively. The results showed again that there were some non-responders to exercise training. These individuals are in the groups that only trained once, twice and some even three times per week and fall into the, the graph's gray zone, as you can see, which denotes the, the technical error and the day-to-day -day variability in testing. Interestingly, there were no non-responders in the groups that trained four or five times a week, so higher frequency. So it could be that non-responders don't actually exist. If you are not responding to exercise, are you simply not training enough? The researchers put this hypothesis to the test. In the second six-week training period, they took all the non-responders I just explained and subjected them to the same exact training period a week later, but with two more training sessions per week than they did before. The outcome, as you could guess, everyone responded. Every individual gained endurance capacity above this technical error denoted by the, the gray box. So to sum it all up, there's a substantial variation in response to training. Much of this is determined by genetics, but external factors, of course, like nutrition, sleep and stress can also influence this. The studies we've discussed in this video don't really al allow us to draw strong conclusions on, on this matter. Total non-responders to exercise when combining lifting and endurance probably don't exist. If you feel like you're a non-responder to mostly endurance exercise, there's a good chance that you're not training frequently enough. If you found this video helpful and also entertaining, please share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate your support as we strive to bring evidence-based fitness information to as many people as possible. All right, stay fit, stay healthy, and I will catch you in the next video. Ciao.